Hello everyone, this is a Silent Canvas and welcome to this Fusion 360 tutorial. In this tutorial, we teach you how to model the Pokeball using Autodesk Fusion 360. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe to the channel for more. Let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is create a new document. So close all existing documents. And you'll see that Fusion automatically gives us <coughs> a new document to start from. So let's start creating the Pokeball. First, head to the Assemble drop down and select the New Component option. In the New Component window, select the name of the component, in this case, let's name it the Top Piece. With the Activate button checked, click OK. You'll now see that Fusion creates a new component. Inside this new component, let's start sketching the Pokeball. Now head to the front view, create a sketch, choose the plane, and now let's create a center diameter circle of 60 millimeters. To do that, head to the sketch drop down and in the circle option, choose center diameter circle. You can also type C on your keyboard to get the same option. Once you've selected, select the center of the work plane as the center of your circle and type in 60. Now once the circle is created, you can drag out th this measurement of the diameter to get a clearer view of the sketch. Next, let's make a line. To create this line, head to the top of your circle and vertically downwards create a line measuring 25 millimeters. So let's change the dimension and make this 25 millimeters. Next, create another line that joins this 25 millimeter line to the circumference of the circle. You now see that we have a sort of sector of a circle already made. Let's trim out the excess. Type T on your keyboard or head to the sketch drop down and select the trim option and trim out this portion of the circle. Once you've done that, let's stop the sketch, head to the home view, zoom out so that you can see the sector. And now under the create menu, choose revolve. Select the profile as this sector that we've made. Select the axis as the y axis. Set the angle to 360 degrees and with the operation add new body, click OK. Now revolve until you can see the base of this dome. Select the face and under the modify tab, select shell. Now we want to create a shell that is outside of the original dome which means the diameter of the dome here is the inner diameter so with the direction selected as outside specify the outside thickness as 1.5 and click ok so we now have a dome which is shelled out with a 1.5 millimeter outer thickness now we're almost done with the top pieces of the pokeball to finish the things off Let's head to the right plane, create a sketch, choose the right plane and type C on the keyboard or select the center diameter circle option and from the center of the work plane create another circle of diameter 20 millimeters. Stop the sketch, head to your home view and press E on the keyboard or head to create and extrude. Select the profile as the circle that you've created, pull it outwards until it cuts the surface and click OK. We now see that we have a clear cut top piece of the Pokeball. The circle that we just cut out is the holder for the Pokeball button. Next, we need to create the second or the central piece of the Pokeball. To do that, activate your home uh, body or the a main body. Vanish the top piece by clicking on the light bulb icon on the left and create another component. For this component let's name it the middle piece with the activate button checked and parent body selected. Click OK. Now in the middle piece let's start sketching out the central portion of the Pokeball. To do that go to the front view and under the sketch tab, say create sketch, choose the plane and head to the arc option 
and select the center point arc. Select the center of your workspace and create an arbitrary arc. Let's give this some dimensions. <coughs> so press D on the keyboard or choose the sketch dimension option and select the arc. We see that the radius of this arc is 51 millimeters. But for the sake of this model, we're going to change it to 30. Now you see that once you change the radius of the arc to 30, the arc moves inwards and scales down to accommodate the 30 millimeter radius. Let's now give this a few more dimensions. So with the sketch dimension option selected, choose the top of the arc and choose the center of the arc and set the vertical distance to 15 millimeters. Repeat the same step for the lower half as well. So select the bottom of the arc, select the center, pull it to your right and you see that you get an editable window where you can enter 15 millimeters and this should lock the arc in place. Now once you're done with the dimensions, you can see that this figure is completely locked in. Select the arc, type O on the keyboard to offset the arc. Now we want to offset the arc inwards by 3 millimeters. So in the editable window, type in minus 3 and say OK. Now we see that this is still not a closed surface so we cannot uh, perform any modifications to this sketch in the 3D workspace especially in the model workspace. So to do that to enable this modification let's close off this figure. Create lines and close these two ends. You see that the moment this figure becomes a closed figure, the shading on the sketch changes. Once you get an orangish yellow shade on your drawing, it means that this figure is completely closed and is now ready for modification. So we will stop the sketch, hit your home view, zoom out till you can see the profile and under the create tab, select revolve. Now for the profile, we're going to select this profile that we've created. For the axis, we're going to stick with the y-axis or the green axis. And with the angle set to 360 and the operation set to new body, we're going to say OK. So here we have the middle portion of the Pokeball. Now, if you have seen a Pokeball before, you'll see that the top piece is nothing but the bottom piece. So we already have the two pieces ready. We have the center portion ready. The only thing we need to model right now is the hole. So, <coughs> let's do that. Now to make the hole, we need to first make the button of the Pokeball. So, until we don't have the button, we cannot put the hole in the right place. So, to do the button, we'll create another component. To do that, enable your parent component, vanish the middle piece by clicking on the light bulb icon on the left. And now, under the Assemble tab, say New Component. Rename it to button or you can rename it to whatever you want and with the activate box checked click OK. Now the final piece is a bit interesting. So we head to the front plane and we say create sketch choose the plane and we choose a center point arc choose the center of the workspace and along this horizontal we want to create an arc. So click anywhere on this horizontal axis and click make an arc upwards. So this is what you should be having on your screens. Now let's give it some dimensions and lock it into place. So type D on your keyboard or select the sketch dimension option from the sketch drop down. Click on the arc once and you'll see the radius pop up. Click once and in the editable window tap in 24 millimeters. You see that once we entered a larger radius, the arc moved out and scaled upwards to accommodate this 24mm radius. So with that locked in, let's give it a few more dimensions. So in the sketch dimension option, click on the top of the arc, click on the center of the arc and give it a vertical distance of 7mm. So you should have an arc that looks something like this. Next up, we're going to create a few more shapes. Now what you want to do is you want to move 
uh, this to the right so you can edit uh, the shape now select the line option and create a horizontal line measuring two millimeters to your left take another line vertically downwards to the axis and close the figure off you see that once my figure is closed I get the orange yellow shade which means I am now free to perform any sort of modification so let's stop the sketch head to your home view until you can see the profile and under the create tab select revolve so for the profile we are now going to select this profile that we created for the axis of re revolution we're going to go for the x axis this time so that you get this sort of coin shape with the angle set to 360 degrees and the operation set to new body click ok so you should have a figure that looks like this a sort of disc uh, shape if you may so we need to create a few more sketches on this in order to complete the button so what we're going to do is we're going to select this face here so to make things more clear this is our home view we're going to select the back portion the back plane here and say create sketch so it should directly zone into that face now tap C on your keyboard to create a center diameter circle and from the center of the workspace create a 10 millimeter circle stop the sketch and tap E on the keyboard to head to the extrude workspace select the profile that is a new circle you have created pull backwards now we do not want to cut we want to perform a join function so change the operation to join you should see that now it creates a joint body and for the distance of extrusion we are going to say minus 10 millimeters let's say ok so now you should have something like this next up select this face the newly created face say create sketch and once it's zoned in tap C on your keyboard and create a center diameter circle of 9.5 millimeters once that's created stop the sketch select this new circle tap E on the keyboard to extrude and give it an extrusion of 1 millimeter the operation performed will be a join which is all right I'm going to say okay next up let's give it a bit of a chamfer so select this edge select modify chamfer let's give it a chamfer of one millimeter with that selected press ok and this is the button for the pokeball right now with all the components ready let's put things together let's now create a complete assembly so what we're going to do is we are now going to activate the uh, home body we're going to make these visible and you can see that I can now click on individual components and, and sort of move them about like this freely right so here we have the middle piece we have the button for the pokeball we have the top portion all we need is a bottom so to do that I'm going to select the top piece here right click on the figure this is very important right click on the figure say copy and click anywhere in the workspace and say paste new so once you do that you should be getting this sort of edit form uh, direction arrows and modification arrows just pull out words and we want to rotate this by 180 degrees move it down just adjust it the way you feel comfortable when you're satisfied say capture position and okay so this means that now this position is captured and we're free to edit next let's put all these components together now so what we're going to do is we're going to create joints so to create the first joint what we're going to do is we're going to select the joint option here 
and it's going to ask me uh, to select one of these options now they say some components have been moved so since we moved these components let's capture the position of these components and now edit now rotate these pieces till you can see the bottom of the pokeball top piece select the inner face here this is the face we want select that and it's going to ask me for the second component to attach it to i'm going to select the centerpiece here and you should see it lock itself in place we're going to go for a rigid joint here so things are going to be easy so once this a top piece is uh, aligned in place i'm going to say okay next let's do the same to the bottom piece click on joint option select the inner face of the piece for component 2 i'm going to select this piece and it's going to lock itself in place as well right so you can now see uh, the pokeball sort of uh, coming together all right next we need to now position uh, the screw to do that we need to create a socket for that screw so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the right plane since this is the home plane and we have the uh, the two sort of holders right here and i'm going to say create sketch in this plane and i'm going to create a 10 millimeter circle in the center now since i don't have the exact center in place here uh, i can project uh, this geometry so i'm going to select this and i'm going to project these planes i'm going to say okay and now i'm going to create center diameter circle i have the center here <coughs> a 10 millimeter circle okay so i'm going to stop sketch now i'm going to go to the home view and say e to extrude select this new circle pull it out and cut so now with that cut let's try to position this uh, button exactly there so i'm going to try and create a joint select this ring here and i'm going to select this ring here and you should see the button plop itself in place now we don't want <coughs> this button to go exactly uh, this uh, this this distance so i'm going to just push it inside let's say by minus 2.5 yeah that should do the trick you see that now we have a pokeball ready to go so the only thing left to do is we can save this figure and let's get ready to render this piece all right so go to your uh, render workspace right on so you see that uh, the default material has been applied that is uh, I guess aluminium in my case head to the appearances tab and let's try to give this uh, the same sort of appearance that we see in the pokemon shows Sorry, getting a bit of a lag here. Yeah. Right. So what we're going to go for is uh, plastic. I'm going to go for a glossy red plastic for the top. I'm going to go for a glossy white plastic on the bottom. Uh, the black plastic goes here. And for this button, we're going to give it a bit of an X factor. We're going to give it an emissive. And I'm going to go for an 8 lumens SMD3528 bulb. So I'm going to close this. We'll go home. And you can see that we have our Pokeball uh, ready to go.
Now after this it's up to you how you want to render your Pokeball. You can go for the in canvas render and get uh, a quicker result. Something like this. But if you're someone who wants uh, a sort of full HD experience you can go for the cloud render feature. It'll go, it'll save your file on the cloud and it gets rendered in full HD or the resolution of your choice. So guys, that's it for this tutorial. Let us know what you think about this tutorial and let us know uh, what you may want in the next one. Till then, goodbye.